Like so many communities, Madison, Indiana flourished during the Industrial Revolution. With its central location on the Ohio River, Madison became an important hub for the River Valley's economic development and trade. Advances in steam power, cotton looming, and slaughterhouses helped Madison expand and prosper. This is the only remaining saddle tree factory in Madison. During the Civil War, saddle trees made here in Madison were used by the Union Army. Today, the factory symbolizes a manufacturing culture that spurred so much of America's economic growth. It was a time of dramatic change for America and for Madison, an opportunity to increase its economic impact in the nation's heartland. Madison was the right city in the right place at the right time. The location was right. Uh, the people that moved here had energy and ingenuity to take advantage of uh, the, the good situation of the city being along the river, having the early railroad and the early uh, transportation facilities. And they took advantage of that in any number of ways by establishing industries to take uh, care of the agricultural produce that was being produced uh, out in uh, the uh, uh, countryside. Things were being shipped in, finished goods were being shipped in, and then uh, partially processed and finished goods were being shipped out of Madison's factories. Uh, on the steamboats that were running up and down the river starting in about 1820. Well, Madison was a beautiful city even from the start. The arrival of your, of your steamboats with your passengers and all, the hotels, the churches. But for uh, an early town that was just getting started as uh, civilization progressed west, it was quite a, quite a city. Madison's economic importance after its founding started because it was on a major transportation highway, the Ohio River, which was one of the great economic thoroughfares of our early country. Steamboat trade, flatboat trade, keelboats coming down the river brought thousands of individuals, thousands of families. There were goods here from all over the world. Well, the major early industries that you had in Madison would have included the iron foundries. Uh, there were several of them. You also had pork packing. Uh, Madison was the second leading uh, pork uh, producer uh, in the West behind Cincinnati. You also had uh, starch and flour mills. Uh, there were big starch mills down on the factory. There were several breweries here in town. Madison was a, throughout the antebellum period, was a very cosmopolitan place. There were railroad car manufacturers, pork packing, slaughterhouses, uh, steamboat building, factories, uh, flour mills. Uh, downtown was a great manufacturing center. Within the months of last March and April, an amount not less than $120,000 in merchandise was imported to the city of Madison, which was chiefly sold to country merchants at wholesale on terms as fair as could be had at Cincinnati or Louisville. The Indiana Gazetteer, 1833. J.F. D. Lanier was an entrepreneur from Madison. He became one of the most important persons in Madison in the 19th century, and then actually in Indiana. Lanier was a catalyst in the development of Madison in several ways. He was instrumental in having the Michigan Road built from Madison all the way to Michigan, and that made Madison an important location on the Ohio River. And then he was also instrumental in, in investing in the Madison and Indianapolis Railroad, which really put Madison on the map and made us a, a transportation hub uh, and people moving into the uh, center of the state of Indiana. So for those reasons, helped in the growth of the city, and then he also invested in businesses uh, in the city. I think the Madison and Indianapolis Railroad was the, the great engine of economic growth here at, in this area and that suddenly if you were in Cincinnati or this part of Indiana and you wanted to send something to Indianapolis to sell or if you were up in the central part of Indiana and you wanted to send something here it had to go through the Madison Railroad. We were the only economic avenue for countless thousands of people in this part of the country. It is with pleasure that we are authorized to say that the Madison and Indianapolis Railroad Company 
through its agent J.F.D. Lanier of this city, has succeeded in negotiating in the city of New York a loan of $100,000 on favorable terms. This will enable the company to complete the road to Indianapolis by the 1st of March, and when completed, it will be of great benefit to the people and no doubt highly profitable to the stockholders. This they deserve, as they took hold of it with energy in a dark and trying hour in the history of Indiana. We are informed that Mr. Lanier was very much indebted for his success to the credit and exertions of Messrs. Winslow and Perkins, a highly respectable and responsible firm in Wall Street, New York. They took the pains to look into the condition and prospects of the company and became satisfied of its entire security and good management and that its stock must prove, at an early period, very profitable. Madison Banner, August 1846. Madison, at its peak, was the economic hub for this part of the Mid-Ohio Valley, I would say. Certainly, it was the marketplace in this part of the country for the farmers and for the manufacturers. I think you could say at its peak uh, in the West, Madison had a very significant role uh, in the West. Of course, Indiana was the West at that time, and the Ohio River was the main artery of transport. So Madison did play a very important role uh, in Western development and in the development of the state of Indiana. Madison, before the Civil War, uh, was one of the leading cities in terms of its population, one of the largest cities in the state, in terms of its uh, industrial output, its commercial uh, and business uh, econo economic climate, uh, and as well as uh, industry and related commerce uh, activities. Eventually, entrepreneurs built railroads that connected Louisville with Indianapolis and Indianapolis with Cincinnati. After that, Madison was left out in the cold. You didn't have to use anything in Madison. So consequently, goods and people quit coming through Madison, and they were able to go directly. Between these major cities, Madison was left out of the equation. Well, Lanier was instrumental in like said, creating um, transportation routes into Madison that helped it to grow and become a center for industry in the state. And by the 1850s, though, I think that he could see that railroads north of here were going to bypass Madison and connect like Indianapolis with Cincinnati and points east and Madison would be bypassed. So I think he could see that and he moved to New York to invest in railroads because that was the place to do it. But by investing in these railroads and creating them, he helped uh, Madison decline in uh, economic importance. We understand that Mr. Lanier, an active and enterprising citizen of Madison who has long been officially connected with a branch bank in this place, is soon to take up his permanent residence in the city of New York. We cannot but regret that Madison is to be deprived of so worthy and so useful a citizen. Madison Daily Tribune, November 15, 1851. It's not as though, I, at least in my view, that it's accurate to say that, um, that when Lanier moved to New York and uh, Indianapolis took over as the rail hub, uh, that things came to a, a screeching halt in Madison and the town essentially went to sleep before the Civil War and failed to wake up and, until 100 years later. Um, I, I just think it's more accurate to uh, characterize it as a, uh, a leveling off of the degree of, uh, of industrial and commercial development. As, as the population declined, then industry became less. Factories were closing up, and of course, uh, your employees uh, were looking elsewhere for jobs. Since they couldn't find them here, it was when, when they left and went elsewhere. Yes, that, that was the big contributing factor, was the, actually the exodus of the, of the populace there to other, uh, to other cities and all. With the, with the death of, of steamboating, the Madison Railroad was out of the equation. Uh, Madison simply began to, to fall back economically. People were leaving town. Uh, there are reports and stories of, of the town beginning to, to become shabby, and so uh, time simply passed Madison by. As the years went by, some of the buildings, 
It's uh, forlorn and empty. Some of the buildings stayed on. But by 1937, the great flood of 1937 came along and it took its toll on our riverfront and our industry. In 1937, the flood came along and basically washed out everything in the downtown area. The map, the, our waterfront had a number of factories and mills, but they had been in a very long-term decline. After 1937, none of it came back. None of it was rebuilt. It was the coup de grace, so to speak. The flood, 1937 flood washed away virtually every, every economic and manufacturing activity in the downtown area, and it simply was not rebuilt after the floods, waters went down. The flood took out so many of the old commercial buildings and factories. They were so damaged and destroyed during this flood. The water stayed up a long period of time. In a way, maybe it was a good way of saying, it's time to move on to a different economic base. Unfortunately, it was very devastating economically and emotionally to so many people up and down the river valley. The Madison Lumber Company and the new independent tobacco warehouse have opened temporary offices in the warehouse of the Sulzer Crude Drug Company at 2nd and West Streets. The river gauge at 1 p.m. today at Madison was 72.8 feet, a rise of one inch since this morning at 8 o'clock. The Madison Chamber of Commerce rooms at the City Hall have been turned over to the Red Cross for headquarters of that agency during the flood emergency. Milk dealers today requested all persons having milk bottles in their possession to turn them into groceries or other places selling milk. They are unable to purchase any at the present time and the city faces a shortage of bottles. Over 300 families have been forced from their homes in Madison. 44 inches of water was in the basement at the Graham Spoke Factory this morning at 10 o'clock, and the arch of the culvert over Crooked Creek at that point was about one inch above the water. All families living west of Broadway in the Crooked Creek section of the city have been evacuated. The backwater has forced Crooked Creek past Broadway and Fifth Streets, and the water is several feet deep in the Valley City Transfer Building and the Noble Dry Cleaning Plant. The slight fall in the river caused but little change in the appearance of the flooded sectors of the city. From points on the hills, Madison resembled a huge peninsula, nearly entirely surrounded by water. Madison could be a metaphor for uh, the fact that economics sh cannot be taken for granted, that uh, the economics, the finances, and people have to be tended to to maintain growth and jobs and, and financial returns. I think Madison has learned uh, from its early days not to put all its eggs in one basket and to have a diversified economy um, where if one thing goes wrong, you have a couple other aspects of the economy to help you uh, uh, pick things up. Uh, and I think Madison is very successful today in having not only a strong uh, uh, industrial base, uh, but also a good health care base, a good educational base, uh, and a good uh, uh, tourist base too. And those, all those three or four aspects all kind of support uh, local economic development here in Madison and complement uh, one another very well. When economic stagnation hit Madison in the latter half of the 19th and early 20th centuries, the city was forced to shift the focus of its economic base. And today Madison is recognized for its heritage tourism. Madison's economic boom years generated the wealth, now symbolized by the city's unique architecture, and it's being preserved for all to see.